Real simple. Contender, pretender. Lions at the bye, six and two. Contender or pretender. They did not treat the deadline as serious as other teams, we would say, contender. Like Eagles, there's no debate. Niners, there's no debate. Seattle, first place in that division right now, adding they're a contender. Where are you at with the Lions? Rico, I'm disappointed they didn't do more at the deadline. Not angry, smash a cheer in the studio, but disappointed because I do think they're a contender. Not this. No, not that. I do think they're a contender, and I wish they would have conducted themselves that way. Yeah, what bothers me about the Lions is they love their locker room a little too much, and I think that's the detriment, that you don't want to bring in outsiders because they could just, you know, our culture. And it's like, they guys, throw up the feng shui, Rico. Until you start winning, you don't have culture. You don't. I'm sorry to say that. Winning teams can say they have a culture. Winning team because your culture – is trophies and your cultures are banners. You're you may be on the way, but you can't shut the door and say, no, 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 you're an outsider. You can't do that. And that's been their problem. It's just like when they draft and they do all it's gotta fit. I don't need you to invite this guy to your barbecue. I don't need you to have a secret Santa with the guy. But you need to go out and get players that are just flat out dogs that can help you win and you are competing with Philly and Seattle and San Francisco this division's over Mm -hmm. but in their mind it's like well we'll just win the division and we'll deal with that later but you there's no second free agent I mean there's no second trade deadline it's not you had to do it now it's not the way baseball used to be yeah the games they lost this year Seattle and Baltimore those are good teams those are contenders they lost those games because they couldn't get consistent pressure on the quarterback Really against the three best teams they played this year, Kansas City included. They didn't get pressure on the quarterback. And rather than address it at the deadline, they just said, culture over talent. And that's why I say they better win this division. Because if they got to go on the road in the playoffs against some guys who can extend plays, Jalen Hurts being one of them, that's not an ideal position for this team. So I would have liked to see them solidify the roster, be better up front. But I'm not going to say they're a pretender. I think that's David wearing Steelers garb today. Your football team has won all these one-score games. If anybody's a pretender, I think this is you projecting, David. I don't feel like the Lions at 6-2 and two, with all these double-digit wins, with a win over the reigning Super Bowl champions, can be classified as pretenders at this point. I just don't. And we'll let the people decide. You guys can jump in. 248-539-9797. Let's get uh, Frank up first. You're on 97-1. Steelers go today. Hey, how's it going? What's going on, Frank? All right. My po- Say again? <laughs> <laughs> hey, my point is, I agree with you all that we haven't played no one, but my uh, problem is with the word pretender. If we're pretender, it's not our fault that we had a bum schedule and we played bums and we beat them. We're supposed to. My thing is, if we was pretenders, we would have lost them games by a field goal, an extra point, or some lucky bull crap. But we beat the bums that we supposed to beat. Mm-hmm. So how is we pretenders? Because now, you didn't beat the teams that were better than you. Now, okay, like I said, the word that. Now, I agree that uh, the teams that we played, they was. But that's not us. I, it's not our for our schedule that we played bums and won. So how is we pretenders? We are real because we beat what we supposed to be and who we supposed to be. Now, are we good enough to beat the talented team? That might be a question. So, like the Vikings, they won last year about eight games barely. Now, them are pretenders because they even play bad against bad teams and barely won against the bad team. But we are beating them bad teams. Right. Just not, it was 11. Yeah. It was 11 one-score wins by Minnesota last year, and the bottom <laughs> fell off this year. Like, you can't sustain smoke and mirrors. The Lions aren't winning with smoke and mirrors. They're lining up and beating people's brains in on both sides right, of the ball. They're beating the bad teams. But I guess where the pretender comes in, and I'm on the fence. I, I, I don't think that their schedule is helping them when it gets to the playoffs because I do think that the regular season, regular season teams and playoff teams are – Two entirely different animals, just like Super Bowl teams and playoff teams. Two different animals. Yes. I don't think your schedule is helping you, but when you play the god-awful teams like the Carolina Panthers and the Raiders, 
You beat them. I mean, you played a C minus game Monday night. You won the game. Mm-hmm. But guys, that was a C minus game. If you played any other team, probably in the league, if 20 other teams, you probably lose that game. But the Raiders are in that bottom 10. You weren't going to lose regardless. Think about the look, think about you couldn't score in the red zone. Think about the turnovers that you had. There was, I mean, there was a lot of things that they can go into the bye week and really say, guys, mm-hmm. we won, but that was the Raiders. But doesn't it say something when you don't play your best and you still win by double digits? That's what I said. The Raiders are so bad. But I would make the case even against Kansas City, they didn't play their best. Remember that game? They had the fumble early, no, no. Marvin Jones. They, they We're not allowed to talk about the Kansas City. My point is, I don't know that this team and most teams are going to play their A game every week. I think the true test of how talented you are, how resilient you are, is when a break goes against you, You, do you still find a way? And the answer emphatically over and over again has been yes. In the Kansas City game, you caught a break. I like how you... No, no. You did catch it. Cookies. It's oh No, no. I don't want to have this fight that's already been had a million times. It's okay to say, as you said, sometimes you catch a break. That doesn't make you a fraud. You caught a break. Kadarius Toney was behind the secondary. He dropped a pass. He catches that. This is a different conversation. Off of a failed fourth down conversion. You caught a break. I'm not taking away the victory. But you got the victory because you caught a great break. They won the game for a number of reasons. I'm sorry we're no, no, going no. back down this, but but Mahomes has the ball at the end of the game, even after the Kadarius Tony drop, even after the pick six. Mahomes ball, fourth quarter at home, and he lost. Right. He lost to the Lions who got the stop. Cookies. I'm saying they won. But let's just call it what it is. It was a great break on their part. You he, make your own breaks. No, that was he just flat out dropped it. That wasn't a defensive play. He just dropped it. And that's okay. You won the game. It's all right. I don't understand why people get so upset when you point out the obvious. You know why? You want to know why? (laughs) Because it is something we're talking about right now. It is the linchpin of the conversation. If the Lions didn't beat Kansas City, David could say they're 0-3 against winning football teams. And anybody else who is on the skeptical side of things, even if you don't want to label them pretender, if they didn't beat Kansas City, you'd have a whole lot more ammunition. But people like me can say, David's out of his mind. Because it's not just that the Lions beat the Raiders, and it's not just that the Lions beat the Packers, they also beat the Kansas City and, Chiefs. And, 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 and let me put it like this. Here's, here's your catching a good break. I'll, I'll localize it to me. I won't talk about the Lions. Oh, you're privileged team. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Christian McCaffrey's running the Wildcat in the NFC Championship game because they ran out of quarterbacks. Eagles caught a great break. What am I going to sit there and be like, no, that's not fair. Caught a great break. Sometimes it happens to you. That was Kansas City. But for the Lions, you don't have a lot of prove them wrong games. Show them that you really are good games. It's really the Kansas City game. No, no. It was the other game. I, I get what you're and saying now, is you want more of them. And I yeah. think that's the other part of this conversation. The rest of the way, the Lions currently play one team with a winning record. They, okay. When one. You go, so this this conversation might not change. Right, when you go beat the brakes off of the Bears twice, are you feeling good? Or or the not? I mean, there's the Bears and you hate them. Yeah, but yeah. it's like, what'd you learn? Now, you might as well be playing the Big Ten West. They're going to play Dallas on the road. Dallas will have a winning record. New Orleans may have a winning record. They're four and four right yeah, now. Yeah, the Chargers can't. They, they can't. You're right. And then you're right. It's the Broncos and the Packers and the Vikings twice and the Bears and yes, twice. It's the NFL. You don't win every game. It's not college. I understand that. But the reason I, I don't think I, I think that this is a different team. But I understand when people want to label them pretenders because you don't have the body of work that you see with other teams. You're seeing Kansas City taking on Miami. In Germany, Mm -hmm. the winner of that game, major bragging rights. You don't have that when you play the Vikings with nobody at quarterback. Contender, pretender, 248-539-9797. Let's get the thoughts of John. You're next up on 97.1. Hi, guys. Um, I was wondering, I'd like your opinion, your opinions on uh, the fact that the Lions are kind of banged up and there will be people coming back toward the end of the season, I assume, and what impact that will have. And also, my opinion is they're not pretenders, especially if they can get their starting offensive line back intact. 
So I'll hang up and listen to what you have to say. When you say Thank returning you. players, we're talking David Montgomery, healthy Ragnow and Jonah Jackson up front. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get a healthy Ragnow. It's just going to be something he deals with. I mean, he's been dealing with this for the last couple of years. Other names. Houston. Yeah. Little pass rushing punch. Yeah. And eventually, if we're to believe the reports, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Postseason. I don't. But I, what I, can I don't want to do because I could already feel like remember when Ken Holland used to argue they didn't have to make moves because the injured players were going to get Could healthy. Be the moves. And it's like I don't want to excuse C- the inaction Gardner-Johnson- this week because you could have had both. You could have had all these guys get healthy and reinforcements. CJ Gardner Johnson coming back from the playoffs is something that bothers me because now, okay, you're got to go up against DK Metcalf or you're going to have to go up against. AJ Brown, or you got to go up against Debo Samuel, and you're still a little rusty. That's not the game that you want to play to get the rust off. So we'll see. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of, of thinking he's going to bet Ragnow. Ragnow is what he is, man. And availability is the best ability. He's only missed one game this no, year. No, no. But right? I'm saying he's just. He's not this. That toe, not the same. All right, contender, pretender, ninety-seven-one.